But uh, I also apologize if I yawn or look extremely tired. I just got back from my grandma's funeral in Georgia, and uh, we got home at 1.30 a.m. So I'm kind of tired, but that's that's okay. Um, I'm also gonna need y'all to like interact because uh, I don't really like public speaking, and this isn't really a big group of people, but um, it's big enough. It's, that's okay. It's not. It's, it's not okay. something I'm, you know, open to do all the time. But this is where I feel like God's called me, and this is where I grow. Um, so I have. I came up with five different ways um, that God speaks. Um, number one is through other people. What's up? Okay. Um, <laughs> Number one is through other people, um, like me, sharing with y'all today. Um, God can speak through me so you can hear, and he can also speak through you for me to hear. So it's all it's all like a big a big uh, circle. We can all hear from each other, but hear God's voice through each other. Um, God doesn't call us to be, uh, sorry, God doesn't say that the call to be a Christian would be easy. Um, so we have to live accordingly. Um, and this... This way, uh, we, we can encourage each other and hear God speak through each other in these, you know. Um, God can use dreams to speak through us, uh, to us. Um, he, we see this example in uh, Genesis when he's speaking to Joseph. Um, when the Pharaoh has dreams and Joseph used the dreams to interpret, um, you know, what God's trying to say. God can also speak through his word. Um, I think this is the main one that uh, we can run to. Um, God's words are all, all throughout the Bible. It's, it's, uh, it's one that we can access very easily. Um, God can speak through his Holy Spirit, um, but we have to be open to it. We, we can't be closed off. We can't have a hard heart. Um, uh, it's the inner man in our heart that, that can hear God. Um, and some can hear an audible voice. Um, let me find the scripture. Uh, John 12, 29, it says, When the crowd heard a voice, some thought it was thunder, while others declared an angel had spoken to him, and some heard God. Um, so, like, we can hear, like, y'all are hearing me now. Some of y'all might hear my, my tone of voice different than others. And it's the same way with God. Some some people heard thunder, but God, other people heard God speaking to them. Um, and some, some declared they had an angel speak to them. Um, so, yeah. Um... I have a short, like, testimony type thing. Uh, we had a prayer and worship night. When was that? Wednesday or Saturday? Saturday. Well, uh, anyway, so we had this prayer and worship night, and I was praying with Pastor Josh about this uh, today because I was just trying to scrounge up some notes. But um, I felt this, this uh, I don't know, I just felt like I needed to go home and pray with my family. And so uh, I texted my mom and dad and asked if, when I got home, we could pray as a family, and it was good. Um, it wasn't like just yeah, we prayed. Um, but my little brother, Caden, he's 15. Um, he kept he kept like pointing on. He had this kid on his heart that he felt like God was telling him that he needed to lead to Jesus. Um, and then the next morning, Caden uh, was somehow allowed to get on the Xbox and play Fortnite or something. I can't remember. But he comes running in the kitchen and he's like, "Lewis just got saved." Lewis is the kid. Lewis just got saved over the party chat. And I was like, I was like, oh my goodness. Like, God, I'm not necessarily saying God used me to pray with my family for that to happen, but I feel like God used that in my life. He spoke to me so that Caden could tell us what God spoke to him and how that played out. And it was just really encouraging to see um, God delivered uh, just some eighth grade kid through a Fortnite chat. Um, to him. Um, so I play baseball, um, and so like I'm, I'm gonna like go off of like on an analogy. So we all we're all here. We all play sports, or you know. Anyways, uh, <laughs> uh, I'm gonna say like God's our coach, um, and if we if we don't listen to what our coach is telling us and how to fix, like for instance, my swing. If I'm if I'm swinging wrong and my coach is like here this is what you need to do here are some fundamentals and here are some ways you can get better and improve and in the long run this is how you can improve your swing overall if I don't listen to what he has to say then then I'm just gonna keep doing what I'm doing 
And that's the same thing with God. If God is speaking to us, um, for us to change something, and we completely blow it off, um, then we'll never, we'll never be changed, and we'll just, I mean, we'll never hear God because we aren't listening. Um, I have two Greek words. Um, these are not by me. These are by my wise grandpa, uh, who is a pastor. But he he uh, explained to me there's two Greek words used. Um, I'm not sure where they are in the Bible, but um, number one is logos or logos. That's what it's spelled, but I think it's logos. Um, and this is the written word um, of how God speaks to us. Um, and then there's rhema, and rhema is in the moment. Um, as we're, you know, just worshiping or reading his word, um, it's in the moment God's speaking to us. Um, in order for us to hear God's voice, um, we have to kill distractions. Um, does anybody have an example of distractions? Uh, phone. Mm -hmm. Other people. Yeah. Entertainment, like shows and music. Oh, yeah, daily news. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Our own thoughts. Mm -hmm. Things going on in your life. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Mm -hmm. I was going to say music. Music is a big one for me. I'm always listening to music. Um, I don't know if it's because my mom's a worship leader at our church. Um, but like I'm always, I always got headphones in. I always listen to some music, and what I, what the music I feed into my life is typically what comes out. Um, so music is a big distraction for me, but it can also be a big encouragement um, factor. Um, some, so I found a verse. Um, my grandma actually showed this to me um, at her mom's funeral. Um, but it's Psalm 46:10. It says, "Be still and know that I am God." Um, this is her, she said it was her favorite verse, and uh, I could tell in the moment she was talking about um, being still because her mom had just passed, um, and I know that that had some, something to do with her sharing this with me, but I was talking to her about it, um, but because if we're not still and we're not listening to God, then how is God going to speak to us in the way we expect it? I'm not saying that God can't speak because he did through Paul um, when, when uh, you know, he's just he wasn't he wasn't seeking God but um, if we're open to it and we we are you know we put down those distractions um, and we're still uh, we can hear him better um, and going off of the distraction thing um, I'm gonna call Callie out because she said it in our group chat but we had listened to the song this song on the prayer to worship night it said uh, <coughs> sorry bye bye clutter except um, the lady said it about five million times, and it was just really funny. But it's a it's a really applicable song, and um, I was glad to see how that kind of tied into my thing. And, uh, yeah. Um. So, like I was saying, we, we have the individual guidance um, from the Holy Spirit. It's, it it can it can't miss no sorry can't work right. It doesn't necessarily have to be God speaking to you audibly. Um, but it, there is that, that Holy Spirit guidance in our heart that we can have. Um, has anyone here ever heard God's voice, whether that's audibly, um, through the word, through worship, through other people, etc.? Pastor Bill? Yeah. I want to give an example. Right. Yeah. I, so, um, I mean, he speaks to us all the time. I mean, even like the Bible talks about general revelation, so even looking at creation, he speaks to us and shows his works. But, but uh, oftentimes... Uh, yeah, listening to him in, in prayer or worship or even praying over other people. Uh, like you do not know anything about them, and then you just you start praying, and he speaks to you, and they're like, that's exactly what has been my mind the past week. He does that a lot. Yeah. For me, it's like through repetition. Like if I, um, if the Lord, like it's clearly from the Lord, and it's said once, I'm like, oh, okay. And then if it's said again, and then again, I'm like, okay, clearly the Lord wants me to hear this. Yeah. I'd say for me, it's just in a room, lights off, dead silence. 
one of my favorite things that a pastor's ever done, our pastor right now has done, was before they start to pray, he pauses. And I love that moment of silence where you're just kind of there waiting and listening and like preparing your heart to pray because so many times like let's say the blessing and then you just start go you know but just waiting and then mm -hmm. having that moment of silence I've, I've only ever had one pastor do that and it's just been awesome so maybe even try that just to kind of sit quietly um just to prepare your heart to listen mm -hmm. too yeah anybody else I feel like for me, it's kind of like in my thoughts, like whenever I'm just kind of like a pause, like a moment of silence, it's just like whenever I'm just thinking, sometimes like I just feel like God speaking to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nate, I know you have something. I do. I see you smiling. <laughs> I do. <laughs> um, <laughs> This is kind of a funny story, but I've never audibly heard the voice of the Lord. I've always wanted to, but I never have. And a while back, I was praying that, Lord, I want to I wanna see you speak. I want to hear you speak. And it kind of showed me how the Lord doesn't have to speak through people, and he doesn't have to speak through his voice. Because... Um, Every day before practice, I go into a bathroom to change, and I go into the handicap stall so I have more room to move around. Mm -hmm. And so I've been going to the same stall for months to change. And then I go in one day, and written on the toilet paper dispenser is, no matter how far you are, I will always love you. And in that moment, I knew, I knew it wasn't written for me, but I knew that the Lord would use that to speak to me. And he really did, and it was super cool. Mm -hmm. That's cool. That's really cool. Um, Wow. Did you say, did you say, God, you're on a roll. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have a personal, um, a personal story. Um, I was actually going through something, um, back in January, early January. Um, and, uh, Pastor Josh helped me walk through this, but anyways, um, I went back into my room and started praying. Um, and I shut the door. There's a verse on it, and oh my goodness, I forgot it. Dang it. But anyways, so I shut the door. Um, I killed every distraction. I told my mom I was going to be off my room praying probably for a long time, and I was. But um, I just turned on worship music and um, just sat there in God's presence um, and just in my room. Um, I didn't necessarily have to have, like, a big youth event or church Sunday service. Um, it was just me and God in my room. Um, and God God spoke to me more clearly than I had ever heard before. Um, he spoke to me more clearly in that moment than I had ever heard him speak to me in a youth event or at church. Um, it was just me and him. And it was so, I, I can't describe it. It was, it was so clear. But it wasn't God's voice audibly. It was it was such a, I guess it was a conviction. But I just remember sitting in my room and just like crying my eyes out. And um, I I literally I never cry. So it was really like, really like an eye opener. Like God God never left. Um, I was the one that looked away. And then while I'm on my bed, listening to worship music, broken. God was just there in my room. And it's just it's just crazy how God doesn't have to use the, he doesn't always use the massive events to speak to us. Um, we can hear God, like Nate was saying, um, audibly, and that would be super cool. I would love to hear God's voice audibly, but I also think it might be a little scary. Um, but we can hear him with our physical ears. Um, but we can also, like, we hear him in our spiritual ears, our heart, our inner man. Um, but when we hear by both, we are able to live out God's plan to the fullest um, for us. And God's plan um, for every Christian is to go and make disciples. Um, so I kind of, I kind of went off on a, a tangent here in my notes, but. Um, you know, with, like, this is our mission field today. Mm -hmm. Glenbrook High School today, us students, this is our mission field. Um, 
I know I'm going to South Africa in the summer um, with a lot of um, my fellow uh, youth group people um, in here. But um, I always felt like God had to use a big missions trip for me to live out that plan. And then um, we had a, an event called Far Retreat um, back in the fall. Um, and I felt like God was calling me to Glenver High School. Um, he was opening my eyes to this is my mission field today. And I didn't ever realize it, but so many people here need to hear Jesus. And I, I, I know that sounds dumb because it's a public school and, and there's so many people here. But it, I just never had the heart open um, to share. And so that's, that's where we need to be is having an open heart and an open mind to what God has for us. Um, and then letting him speak to us and through us. Um, Luke uh, 11, 9 through 10. Wait, does anybody want to read it? And it, said, it says, and so I tell you, keep on asking and you will receive what, what you ask for. Keep on seeking and you will find. Keep on knocking and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks receives and everyone who seeks finds. And to everyone who knocks, the door will be open. Um, if we aren't seeking God, then how are we going to find him? Mm -hmm. um, I think the main, the main way we can find God is through his word. Um, and that's, that's uh, personal for me. Maybe some people hear him better through other people, like I said. Um, but I feel like the Word the word of God is, is where we need to start. Um, if we're not reading our Bibles, then uh, it's, it's not going to, we're not going to be walking his, his uh, path for us. Um, and then Luke 9, 23 says, um, he said to the crowd, if any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your way, take up your cross daily, and follow me. Um, so these are just examples of how we can hear Jesus speaking in the Bible, even though it's not directly to us. It was to um, to the people that he was calling to be his disciples, and that is us, um, but specifically in the time frame. Um, but we, we have to drop everything. Um, like Matthew, Matthew literally dropped everything immediately and left. And um, we have to be like Matthew. We have to draw off our past and just, you know, stand up and go follow Jesus. And that's all it takes. And, yeah. So we can hear God's voice um, through Luke. Um, I have another scripture, but I don't know how I tied that in. Um, it's Psalm 77, 13. It says, Oh God, your, your ways are holy. Is there any God as mighty as you? Um, and then Isaiah 55, 9 says, For just as the heavens are higher than the earth, so my ways are higher in your ways, my thought, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. Um, I think I was saying, like, um, like we, we, we get in our heads and we think that, that we, we can, you know, live out God's plan without him. Or, or we think we can live our lives without him. And it's just not going to work because God... God's God. He has control over everything. Um, and his ways are higher, so there's no way we can you know, we can't we can't be living without him. Um that's basically all I have. Um I kind of skimmed over all my stuff and I'm kind of disappointed that I did. But um yeah, so my my, my main point